Hello Gems, Leah from Red Emerald Yoga. Welcome back to my channel for today's unboxing video. Today is May 8th. I don't know what day I will have this video actually edited and published. But it's a beautiful, quiet day. My family left to go surfing and I am here all alone. I'm going to be making some enchiladas later and I thought, you know what, I'm going to take advantage of this quiet time and do an unboxing video. Oh, you know what, I should put this in there. Let's see. So today we are going to be opening up a deck that I've had for a while. Um, I just never got around to opening it. So it is long overdue. So today we're going to be opening up Seasons of the Witch, Beltine Oracle by Lorraine Anderson and Juliet Diaz. I always mispronounce her name and then I catch it after. So it's not um, Lorraine, it's Lorianne, illustrated by Giada Rose. So this is a rock pool deck. Let's get it out of this packaging. Every time I went to open this deck, I'm like, I live in a condo, so <laughs> I'm, I'm at the mercy <laughs> of neighbors and, you know, various uh, contractors <laughs> who come and go. So every time I go to open this deck, we have somebody up on the roof stomping over my bedroom or <laughs> gardeners or some other shenanigans going on. So... The box feels really, um, really matte. It's not a buttery, it's not a buttery finish like I thought it was going to be. It's really nice. The gold part right here and this little um, filigree stuff, that is gold foil. And we have gold foiling on the side. I'm trying to get it to bling for you. So it's that bling bling gold gilding. On the back, it says, unlock your potential for growth. I'm making sure I'm on camera. <laughs> unlock your potential for growth, creativity, and abundance with the energy of Beltane. So we're not too far past, um, you know, Beltane, but also known as May Day, Beltane honors life and is a celebration of passion and putting your plans into action. I thought, you know what? We're in the full, uh, not full, we're in the new moon in Taurus and Taurus also carries that energy. Like if you can get a Taurus going, you know, there's no stopping it. So I really like that. Plus it's kind of, um, maybe it's just me, <laughs> but I actually like um, when I'm challenged. That's why I'm wearing this red nail polish right here because red is a color that might um, irritate and upset a Taurus, a grounded Taurus. And I thought, you know what, like, I think it's good when you're confronted, <laughs> when you're confronted with things that, you know, trigger you, because then it's like, why is this bothering me? This is something that I need to work on. So yeah, I think it's a perfect time. And that's something that I'm working with, with one of my private clients right now, we are working um, through this person's triggers, and they just think it's hilarious, you know? <laughs> I can like push little buttons and they're just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you're going there. <laughs> and then we work through it. So anyways, um, where was I? Uh, putting your plans into action. The earth's energies are at their strongest and most active and all of life is bursting with potent fertility. At this point in the wheel of the year, your potential can be unleashed. These cards align with your energy, helping you to unlock your inner wisdom with the help of powerful spiritual forces. Along with thoughtful meanings are invocations or powerful word spells to invoke the energy of each card and to send your intentions of spiritual well-being out into the universe. So this is a 44 card deck and it does come with the guidebook. Ooh, I like that sound. I'm going to do it again. I don't know about you, but that's very satisfying for me. <laughs> I love that. Oops. 
So we just have like this um, like mustardy muted goldish brown um, with the moon. That's pretty. It's not uh, sparkly or foily or anything. They always have their little insert here for the rock pool decks. And here is the guidebook. So it's nice and small. I do like the little B on the back. I think that's cute. So this is, I am looking for it. Okay, published in 2021. And it says, to do copyright illustrations 2020 so I don't really know um I was looking on the box where is it <laughs> okay <laughs> over here so it doesn't really tell me exactly when the publishing date was um and then sometimes on these books they're a little hard to understand but I think this one is probably going to be copyright 2022 because if it was 2021 obviously the 2022 wouldn't be there <laughs> so it's got to be 2022 <laughs> okay so all right so here we have the introduction Beltane themes and areas of focus how to use the cards we have card spreads and then it looks like quite a few 11 to page 21 so I do like that this author always gives a lot of spreads and I find that you can also use them with tarot cards or with other oracle decks so those are really fun to work with it has um the cards and it looks like they are in alphabetical order which I like it's in color I will read the introduction it's not too long if you want to skip it then please feel free to do so it says, and so the wheel turns again. This time we've set our eyes upon Beltane, the season of abundance, fertility, passion, and growth. From day one, it was our intention to create a specific deck for each of the Sabbaths, collectively known as the Wheel of the Year. The Witch's New Year begins with Sowen and flows to Yule, Imbolc, Ostara, Beltane, Midsummer, and Lamas. And finally ends with Mabon. Our first two decks, Samhain and Yule, felt so appropriate for the beginning of this journey. But now we've jumped around a bit because we were both in the midst of welcoming more fun and freedom into our lives. Beltane's bright energy felt like a natural fit for where we were in our respective journeys right now. Seasons of the Witch Beltane Oracle is the kind of deck you'll want to grab when you're ready to make yourself a priority. This deck is very inward. I was just checking like, wait, <laughs> am I recording? <laughs> it's that concussion kicking in every so often. I'm like, wait, what, did, what just happened or what didn't happen? <laughs> Focus to help you find the encouragement you need to see your life with fresh eyes. Think of spring erupting in your soul when suddenly everything feels new and more colorful and is spreading as far as the eye can see. These cards are meant to facilitate similar shifts in your perspective, as well as offer clarity. Just as the sun grows stronger in spring, so too will you receive increased illumination while working with this deck and beyond. At times, the messages will be exactly what you were already thinking, but at other times, they won't be what you were expecting. I don't know if you can hear that. That's my dog snoring. <laughs> in both instances, the cards are reading from your soul, offering you the guidance that is most needed. Remain open-minded as you work with these cards now and know that the meanings you receive are always working in alignment with the energies surrounding you. It is our greatest wish that these cards will unlock the extraordinary gifts we know are waiting within you. With so much light and gratitude to you, Lorianne and Julia. I had to take a pause there. Like, wait, <laughs> let me not screw this name up again. <laughs> I'm also cracking up when I'm reading. I'm trying to be serious and hold a straight face, but my dog is <laughs> snoring so loud. I'm going to go move him and see if he'll just stop snoring. Let me see. Okay, let's see if that works. <laughs> 
So it says Beltane themes and areas of focus. So these are things like um, that you would want to bring into your life. You know, if you feel like these areas are lacking or this is something that you, your, you or your client want to work on, there are areas like abundance, creativity, fertility, growth, love, lust, marriage, other world, passion, pleasure, psychic ability, purification, sensuality, sex, sexuality, union, visions, warmth, and youth. So I don't know about you, but I get a lot of readings um, or people inquiring about these things throughout the year, not only around Beltane. So it has a how to use the cards, invocations, using the cards beyond Beltane, which is my intention. I don't intend to only use this during the time of Beltane. It has daily guidance cards, um, a suggestion, daily reflection cards intention cards, altar cards. We have some Beltane card spreads. I don't know if you can hear that. That is my neighbor. He's leaving or coming. I'm not too sure. Um, interviewing your deck spread, getting to know the seasons of the witch. I'm not too sure which uh, card spread we're going to do, but we will be doing a reading from the book at the end of the video. A three card spread. Beltane cross, maple spread for shifting perspectives, flower crown spread for clarity in difficult times, self worship spread for understanding your gifts. Oh, that looks fun. Goddess spread for finding the right path, creating, or wait, what? <laughs> Creation spread for starting something new. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I want to do them all. <laughs> And then it goes into the cards. I like that um, there is a good amount of writing for each card, but it's not overwhelming. Let's see. Let's go to the back. It has a bonus material, some acknowledgments about the authors, if you want to read about them, and about the illustrator. All right, so let's get into the cards, which is why I'm sure you are here. The inside of the bottom is the same as the top. So this is what the cards look like right out of the box. I am... I don't want to get too excited, but I just want to point out that there is no edge wear <laughs> upon taking off the band. I'm really excited about that. Usually there is edge wear. Um, so far, I think this would be the first deck in the series that I've opened that has not had edge wear. It does not look like the edges are lifting or uncomfortable, the, maybe like a tiny bit over here on this one, but it's very, very minimal. It's almost non-existent. I'm only pointing it out because I honestly do feel it like a teensy tiny bit, but it's, it's barely there because this is an honest review. So I'm not going to like lie and bullshit you and pretend it's not there if I see it. Um, the corners are roundish. I do prefer a round corner, but these are not bad. They're almost round. <laughs> All right, so let's go into the cards. I'm going to lower my camera so we can get a close up on these cards. They are gorgeous. Our first card is B. And I love how these little like B hairs kind of look like a fur, like a fur. I don't know. It's not like really a jacket, but it's like a fancy fur dress, I guess. Like the sleeves are kind of puffed out and we got like that little bee, I don't know what it's called, hair, fuzz, fur, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> bee fuzz. <laughs> I think this is gorgeous. I think she's really beautiful. I love her floral little crown, the little detail with the curl on her face and just this long, elegant finger with the bee landing on it. Don't drink all of life from one flower. 
for there are many to taste and many to explore. We have bonfire. Wait, I'm kind of off camera. These do cards, these, these cards do glare. So I have all of my lights on and I can totally glare out his whole face if I try. So if you're doing a video reading, um, you will have to pay attention and make sure that you're not glaring out your card. So bonfire, it is through remembering that you will wake the ritual of your existence and be reborn in mighty celebration. Oh my gosh. And he's just like totally coming out of the flames. He's got his little ring there, his nose ring. And then what is that? I'm guessing it's a bee because the bees are heavily featured throughout the deck. So I'm guessing that that is a bee on his forehead. These cards are kind of stuck together. I'm going to, I'm going to unstick these really quick because I don't want them to stick and mess up the gilding. Oh, you hear that? I don't know if it's just me. I'm going to have to pull another um, another one of these cards later from another deck. I, I feel like these cards um, are thinner than most Oracle decks. I'm going to compare it to the other, um, another deck from this series After, at the end. So this one is Boundaries. I love how she has her sacred circle around her. It's like an energetic bubble. She's pushing, she's pushing boundaries. Boundaries are sewn into the parts of who you are, for they are not to be crossed. That is cool. I love how she's like soaking in the energy of the earth and she's pushing it out like this negativity over here. Chant. Hear me loud, hear me roar. For I am here in my truth. That's cute. Kind of gives me Three of Cups vibes. I do like that all of the artwork looks like it's painted by a human hand. This one is Cow. May the embrace of all that is nurturing you awaken and all that you are becoming. That's so cute. It's like one of those Highland cows. Creation. That's a cool card. I love it. Definitely have like Mother Earth vibes going on here. Through the darkness, I crossed and still I found myself in the presence of life. I love how the tree is just holding her and embracing her. Earth worship. Until my body is in your arms, I will worship you, dear mother of mine. That's cool. I like the tree. I like the crystals, the wheat coming out. We have the spider, the bird, the butterfly. See a lot of growth and transformation. So much abundance and possibilities. Healing. Embodiment. I love that there's an older person featured. That's something that we don't normally get in a lot of decks. Um, now unsown from the flesh, a most alluring lullaby steals my pain as the skies bleed from my heart and the embodiment I am to claim. That's gorgeous. I remember going with my, um, my best friend. So she was an 80 year old woman, 80 something. I don't know. And, um, it was my husband's stepbrother's grandma. So we were best friends. And anyways, she wanted to go buy, um, Christmas ornaments 
And so we took her to Home Depot and it was a fight just to get her in the car because she didn't want to go in the wheelchair. She was having a rough day. She had an, uh, a shattered hip from a surfing injury from when she was younger. And we finally got her in the wheelchair. You know, we convinced her that nobody was going to stare at her. We take her in Home Depot. And the first thing that happens, is this young worker comes up and really loudly leans over, you know, to speak to her and speaks really slow. Hi, are you finding everything okay? And she just started crying. She was bawling and, and the worker was like, oh no, what's wrong? <laughs> Which made her cry even more. And I just said, she's old, not stupid. <laughs> you know, like, she doesn't have a hearing problem and then the worker apologized and then just started talking to her like a normal person <laughs> but that's you know I think that old age should be celebrated <laughs> just because you see somebody old or they're in a wheelchair <laughs> doesn't mean <laughs> that they can't understand you <laughs> okay moving on <laughs> Faye card nine not everything is as it may seem. Be cautious, dear one, for there is a story beneath the tale. Ooh. Oh my goodness. They look a bit menacing. And then I think those are magic mushrooms. So like, definitely see like some perception issues coming up with this card. fertilizing. Food is not the only thing that nourishes you, dear one. Be mindful of what you feed your soul. Yes, definitely. Fire festival. Through flame and through song, there will rise a new dawn. flower crown. Wear your power proudly and unapologetically, for it is your birthright and is eternal like the soul. Well, I, I don't know. This one might be my favorite. I'm not too sure. I'm just going to leave that one over to the side. Goat. Fearless I am in the path. I choose for I've never been led astray, always finding my way. Mm. Very cool. Goddess, make sure to feel it in your bones, for you are what you believe. That is the truth. I love that, just that, that the honey dripping down. She's bathing in the honey, the sweetness of life. Green man, all that I desire comes to me easily and effortlessly. I know this to be true, for I am abundant in all that I do. Very cool. I was wondering if the green man was gonna be featured in this deck. I feel like usually um, these decks tend to lean a lot more to the feminine, but I am happy to see the green man here. Growth. Inside myself, I've sown beauty with wounds, which speaks of my immortality in the expansive eternal song, softly bellowing in the spirit. I love these little tendrils that are just coming out. At first, I thought they were in the background and then maybe just like kind of in the front. And then I thought, oh, um, you know, it's just like a decoration on the card. But then I realized, oh, they're actually coming out from her fingers, which I think is really cool. Hand fasting. The pools pulse through all that I am. No hidden form is left untouched. I am willing, I am risking, for I yearn for unity spilled lustrously upon my lips. That is a really pretty card. And I love that the hand fasting is being done with ivy. 
And there's so much growth. And it's com coming out like in all directions. Again, the bees are heavily featured. Honey, oh my gosh, I don't know if that's pretty or creepy. I think this card, this card is a little bit creepy for me. <laughs> <laughs> the sweetness of you swells and the grace of your pool. Oh, so beautifully lethal. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I think it's meant to be creepy. Those eyes are, <laughs> they're bleeding, honey. <laughs> That's hilarious. <clears throat> Indulgence. You are worth every desire, every dream. Demand what is yours. Demand what you need. This card's kind of tripping me out a little bit. I'm like, how is she floating? Like, how long are her legs? You know, like, how is she being supported? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> but I do like the card. It's really pretty. <laughs> Just it's kind of freaking me out a little bit. <laughs> inner power let it be known no will or desire is more powerful than I embodied I like the energy of this card it's not my favorite um, visually but I do like it Love spell. Let the honey of your soul swell in the depths of love. That's pretty cute. I like that one. Maiden. Demand what is yours and take back what was taken. Reclaim until you've gathered all of you. Ooh, look at all the transformation. This growth. The golden leaves remind me of abundance and like really tapping into, um, you, you can't really tell, like is it orange, is it red, is it both? She tapping into her root and her sacral chakras. Definitely tapping into her solar plexus. I think that's really cool. Manifestation. Sometimes they come as a breeze upon your fingertips. At other times, they dwell in the depths of your soul. It is a dance between you and spirit as the magic unfolds. I love how her body language has her shoulders back and down and her chest is lifting up like a slight back bend. You know, she's just like, are those her ancestors or she, no, she's manifesting. Okay. She's manifesting her tribe or I'm not too sure you know I'd have to go through the guidebook but but I love how um it looks like it's coming from her chest you know and I always say that imagine your your heart is like a flashlight and you're shining your light forward I'm always saying that in yoga so this card really speaks to me I love that that's actually how <laughs> how I cue <laughs> so that's pretty cool maypole I am fertile in what I seed, for there is reason to dance and drink upon the riches I receive. That's gorgeous. Is it going to be my favorite? I don't know. Maybe. Milk and butter. Like the silk of one's flesh, I am the giver. I am your eternal. I love how she's just bathing in it and soaking it up. Morning dew. What stillness does the silence of one's steadiness bring? Okay, hello. <laughs> you might be my favorite. Um, <laughs> yeah, these, these two are going to come out. Now we're back to those two. Oak. Don't just look within. Dive deeply into the eternal realms of knowing. Oh my gosh, but now we have a heavy contender here with the mighty oak <laughs> oh i think the cards get better as they go here we're moving <laughs> here we're moving into oracle <laughs> it's 
spirits of other worlds tell me tales of the unknown. Tell me tales of the forbidden. Oh my gosh. I love the peacock leaf up there. That is a symbol of enlightenment, spiritual transformation. Love that. Orgasm. Hello. <laughs> Trust your body. Elevate your spirit. Open the gates to your renewal. I love that. It's a flower and the petals are opened. Cannot force a flower to open too soon. I love it with the honey all around and just, oh my God. Yes. Pegasus. I don't even know like if I can elaborate on this too much because like we're on YouTube. <laughs> Pegasus. <laughs> Break free, dear one. Spread wide and far for you aren't containable. You are limitless. I love how it's a horse. You can see like a vague silhouette. You can kind of feel like, like there's like a skin on the bones, but the bones are clearly exposed. Um, the horse does have hair. It's very, it's very spooky. It's very otherworldly for sure. And then just like her wings just glow in the moonlight. They just catch the light and then she's dripping again. She's dripping the honey. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Phoenix summons your flesh rises from the ashes and into the expansive flame of your soul. Oh, yes, you're going in the favorites too. <laughs> Primal. There is no other way around but through the very truth that lives within you. Yes, this is not going to be my favorite visually, but I do like this card. I love how she's just dripping with honey. I guess she's dripping honey. That could be um, a dripping like sweetness, dripping, you know, um, that sweet gold through like this alchemical process, like through the heating, um, the internal, the internal heat, the tapas, like doing the work, by working through it. Oh my gosh, I, I do like that card, but it's not gonna be my favorite. Ribbons, for it lives in the silk of my binding, the knots in my truth, the eye of becoming the witness swallowed in stillness. Yeah, I think I already took out the maypole one. Yeah. That's cool. Row one. There. Oh my goodness, somebody's hammering away. <laughs> There's no need to fear, dear one. Protected you are and protected you will always be. I like how in like underneath the ground, underneath the safety of this mighty tree, there's these little caverns in there. We got crystals. It looks like maybe some water, some medicinal mushrooms. And then this forest creature, whatever they are, um, taking shelter. And they're dancing and hiding in the tree. It looks like magic or fairy lights, fireflies or something. That is really cool. Sacred waters. Drunken by the swell of the sea, I can feel the blanket of her embrace. Unafraid of the presence releasing the cords, I call her in. I call her deeply within. Wow, I love it. It's like a water ritual, cleansing, acknowledging. That's cool. Sacrifice. You must find the ebb and flow of life within your very self. Embracing it all is embracing truth. I love how these look like, you know, they're just like reaching out into the earth. Like veins and arteries. It looks like a heart. It's like her blood is nourishing the earth. We have cycles with the moon. I see like some as above, as below vibes. 
It kind of also makes it feel like with the circle here, kind of like a womb, you know, like, I don't know. It's, it's pretty cool. And again, the bees are heavily featured. Self-worship. My hands fold as I speak to the stars, watching as the sky holds its breath. It's in stillness that I find all that I am and all of divinity within me. I love how she's a little bit chubby and she's just looking at herself lovingly, making herself look beautiful, admiring. That's cool. Then here we have sex magic. I draw on my body with an invisible blade carved with the bliss of lustrous teeth. It is in the allure that I will meet blood and flesh. And here we have all of the ivy just intertwining around everybody. Stone circle. In ceremony, you conjure a devotion so deeply it reflects thy worship into yourself. Sun God, again with the dripping honey, come all come now, expand into the skies and into the shadows below. And the sun on his necklace. Surrender. There's nothing more blissful than the act of letting go, of setting yourself free of all that doesn't serve you. That is true, but to get to this point is no easy task. <laughs> it takes a lot of work to get to that point. I know for myself personally, there's things that I've resisted for so long and fought to keep. And then only when I finally surrendered and let go, I was like, oh, <laughs> is, this what, is this what was available to me the whole time? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we have the lovers. Love lulls all sorrow and bewitches flesh, mind, and breath, reminding me that I am unafraid of the unfurling winds of my eternity. Vision. To find enlightenment, seek nowhere for it lives within you. That is true. It is available to us all. I love how there's a cord being cut. Wild cat. He looks a bit strange to me. Be still and tune in, for there is something afoot lurking alongside you. Very strange looking lion. He, Even though he clearly looks like a lion with horns, um, his body shape just kind of makes me think, um, I don't know, like, and his face, like, like he's less lion. <laughs> than he appears to be. I don't know. It's just very strange to me. All right, so let's find my favorite card. Let's see. Who is going to come out first? I think we're going to take out Phoenix. And here we have the Oak, Pegasus, Oracle, and Orgasm. Mm. So I'm going off like visually included. Um, I think visually these two, I just like um, for sure more than this one, even though I really do like this card. 
And I think I like it more than Pegasus, even though this card really draws me in. Um, now that I'm looking to it next to Oak, like Oak is just something that I like way more than Pegasus. And now I need to figure out like, okay, so is it going to be a person card or is it going to be the Oak? Hmm. I think I like Morning Dew more than Oracle. I love this card. I'm really drawn in by the simplicity of Morning Dew. Also, those are birch trees. Um, that's where you find Shaga Mushroom, and I really love Shaga. I love all the fog. And it looks like she's dripping, but instead of dripping honey, she's dripping water, it looks like. Morning Dew. I just feel like um, fog is so magical. You're surrounded by water. Just kind of heightens your intuition. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Morning Dew over Flower Crown, even though this is just absolutely stunning. Mm. Oh my gosh, I don't know. Mm. I love his eyelashes just like they look like hair they look so soft but I think I'm gonna go with morning dew as my favorite so let's go to the guidebook and see what this has to say for morning dew actually let me put this over here so we can have room for this guidebook card 26 all right so it just has your card the little snippet at the bottom it repeats it oh but it does have a keyword which says stillness and then it goes into the meaning which says take a pause dear one for right now is not the time for action there is plenty moving around you that is causing you to feel unrooted and lacking in direction when this happens, it is because you are still in the transition stage. There's often a desire to skip past the dark, murky parts of the journey, but there is value in the moments when nothing seems clear. There is more to learn, embrace, or consider before making any future plans. Attempting to force any changes now will only result in more frustration and perhaps you may end up going backwards. You will know when the time is right to move ahead because clarity and sureness will return to you. Rather than focusing on the future, turn your gaze to what is immediately in front of you. Now is a good time to detox, either in your home or in other areas of your life. Clearing out whatever is no longer useful to you will stimulate additional shifts and make room for what is yet to come. I love that. I'm kind of on a, that kind of a spree right now. Um, not only myself, my son kind of sparked it off and just went on this massive spring cleaning spree and just, he's just really lightened up our garage and it just made us feel like this sigh, like, oh, wow. Thank you for doing, just doing such an amazing job on that. And it kind of sparked us off in the home too. And uh, just like all of this stuff, you know, that you haven't used in so long just holding on to it um and making room for for something new i love that physically and and emotionally you know that's just a, a really good thing to do so let's check out these cards we do have this bling bling gilding on the outside it's very reflective maybe that's my tripod <laughs> let me see if i can get me in there oh uh, that's my outline <laughs> you can't really see it too good <laughs> but I'm waving at you. Hi. <laughs> okay. So I think that this bling bling gilding will get scratched and scuffed eventually with use. Let's see how these cards feel when they shuffle. So for our first shuffle, they do shuffle very nicely. These won't take forever and a day to break in. Really nice. They are, you know, bigger than a tarot card, so 
kind of work your hands around them, but they're not too difficult to shuffle. I'm going over my list. Let me see. Um, the packaging was really nice. I like the look of the box. I think the ease of opening the functionality of the box is perfect. Um, and again, I just love that sound, which I will do one more time for you because all of my boxes don't sound like this. So let me just do it one more time. Oh, <laughs> I just, I really like that. <laughs> don't ask me why. <laughs> Okay, the durability and the size of the box, I'm happy with that. The guidebook and the size, I'm also happy with that. I think the guidebook is just the right size. It's the same size as the cards and the box. It fits nicely. And we don't have to have an extra large box just for the guidebook. Um, the cover art, look and feel, I'm happy with that. Let's check out the smell and the font size. Okay, so on the cards, Let's do a little sniff test. Wait, I was gonna say there's no smell, but as I opened up my mouth to say there's no smell, I got a taste. <laughs> so that was weird. I didn't know that, that was actually gonna be a thing. <laughs> That's not something I like, oh yeah, let's, let's don't forget to put what the cards taste like. <laughs> Let me smell this again. There's no smell to the cards. That is so weird. I'm going to open up my mouth and take an inhale through my mouth and see if I taste that same taste again. I do. Um, so these cards are off gassing. Um, I don't recommend you doing that. That's some, not something that I will ever put on my list. I'm not gonna be like, ooh, like uh, opening my mouth, <laughs> see if I could taste the cards because that's just really weird. But um, that just happened organically all on its own and um, Again, you know, if I see it, <laughs> if I smell it, <laughs> and apparently if I just taste it all on its own, I'm, I'm going to tell you. Um, let's check out the smell from the book. Where's my book? Oh, here it is. The book is really soft and subtle. It's um, a bit inky, like an inky smell, but it's not, uh, it's not offensive. I, the book kind of smells like a newspaper to me but like an inkier newspaper. Um, what is next? The organization of the guidebook. I do like the way that it is uh, organized. I like that the cards are all numbered and you can easily find them in the guidebook. Plus they're also alphabetical order. Um, the font size is a little bit on the small side for this little snippet. And the card title is easy to see, as well as the number. I feel like some of the cards um, were a little bit muted. Not too bad, but I feel like it's kind of the style of the card. Like some of them are soft, like with this really soft pastel um, colors. I feel like the cards where they are soft... They do bring those same colors and tones in, so I do feel like it ties in. But just like some of them, they're a little bit light. Um, but I mean, like, I, the, I don't know. I can see everybody. Nobody's literally blending into the background, so I'm okay. I do feel like some cards are, um, like, really colored in and then others like these ones you know like they're really colored in and they don't seem like they're done in the same art style as say this one but I do feel like the same style of art is done in the background so is it like a completely cohesive theme um I think that it does tie in in like in some way they are tied in, but I feel like that the cards could have been from two different decks. Um, you know, like this one's just like a lot, just seems like more bold. I really like the contrast on this card, by the way. I love that. And it's just like, I don't know, like more colored in, I guess, and not so pale, like, the green is like really 
light. I, I don't really know how to describe it really. Um, yeah, I just feel like it's just like a slightly different style. Even like, like even from this one. But again, I feel like there's like that watercolor in the background, but she looks really, she doesn't have that same watercolory style where the horse does. Okay, here we go. Like these people just look different. And I feel like the people are done in the same style. Where's the man? Him. I feel like he doesn't really fit. But I mean, he's a fire, you know, so like how else are you going to show the fire? I don't know. Like should it have just been a fire? I'm not too sure. I still like the card, but yeah, whatever. I do like the deck. I just don't feel like it's like just one super cohesive theme, but I don't feel like it's not cohesive. Fingerprints. Let me find a dark card and see if we can get any fingerprints on there or see if it has a coating. So these cards do have a coating, which makes them fingerprint resistant. I don't know how sweaty your hands are, but I can't get any fingerprints on this black part of the card, which is nice. Is it for newbies? Yeah, I think that newbies could totally rock this deck for sure. Especially if you got your guidebook and then you have um, the spreads in there. How I keep it, how will I store it in its box with my Oracle cards? Who might like it? I think if you are looking for a deck with a pagan theme, if you are looking for a deck with a nature theme, if you're looking to celebrate, you know, Beltane, obviously. If you wanted people of different ethnicities, different ages, um, if you're a bee lover, I do like that there's dudes in there, you know, it's not only feminine. Um, that's nice. If you're a kitchen witch, if you are an herbalist, I think you might like this deck. You work with nature who might not like it if some of the words are going to bother you that honestly might freak a couple people out for one just like the creepy eyes and for two if you have that phobia with the little holes um that might freak you out uh let me see where are they okay i'm back i had to take a call and Put another candle in there but yeah so if nudity bothers you this won't be the deck for you um some of the words i'm just listening to like um i hear certain clients in my head right now okay so like if the word sacrifice is going to bother you or blood okay again with the whole nudity thing okay the word orgasm i do have clients that would be offended by that it does not offend me but that's just not a deck that I would pull out for them, or I might take that card out or those cards out for um, the ones that I just know. The nudity and then also the words sex magic, um, that would not sit right with all of my clients. And again, um, nudity. So yeah, if any of those things are going to offend you, may not be the deck for you. I think it's good to make an informed decision. You know, if you see something that you don't like, then you're not stuck with trying to do the return. You're not wasting, um, you know, your time or, you know, the merchant's time or delivery driver's time. You just don't have to deal with the hassle. There are decks that I purchased and I didn't know what they were gonna look like on the inside and I would have liked to return them and I just missed the return window. So if I would have uh, known before, you know, some of these decks I order on pre-order and there's just like literally no way of knowing what they're gonna be like. And um, just sometimes I get busy <laughs> and I just miss the return window and then I'm stuck with them. Um, so let's see. I will leave a link in the description for you to purchase an authentic copy. Leave a comment below letting me know what you thought about this deck. What was your favorite card? What was your least favorite card? Did anything freak you out? 
Um, did anything offend you? Let me know. <laughs> what did you think about it? Um, let me see if there's anything else on my list that I forgot. Oh, does it remind me? Oh, two things. Does it remind me of a deck that I have? Kind of reminds me of my Seasons of the Witch um, other decks that I've opened, but I can't say that it's like... If I, if I looked at some of the cards, that I would be like, oh, that's Seasons of the Witch. Um, it doesn't have, or like this one has more of that feel for me. Um, I wanted to see, compare the card thickness. So let me do that too. So this card feels the same. I don't know why I was thinking it was different. Um, yeah, I guess it feels the same. Did I do a random card? I don't think I did a random card. I think I was shuffling for the random card and then I never got around to it. So let's find our random card. Here we have Fire Festival. Let's see how this card reads. I think I just got sidetracked. Um, for one, when I answered the phone and for two, like I'm still not fully recovered from hitting my head. So <laughs> sometimes I kind of space out. All right, so here the keyword for fire festival is new perspective. And on the card, it says through flame and through song, there will rise a new dawn. So the book says a strong blaze is needed at this time to burn away the doubts, fears, and worries you have held within your mind. Fire festival appears when you are your own worst enemy. When you are the only thing standing in the way of moving towards love, abundance, and joy. Not only are you blocking blessings, but the weight of your stress and anxiety is becoming too much to hold. Your soul is urgently trying to get your attention to let you know you cannot go on as you have. Your worries may be valid, but they are not as bad as they may seem. You're overthinking things which is causing you additional stress. The answer to your situation is a new perspective and a radical shift in your beliefs. Fire Festival also appears when it may be time to leave your situation. Sometimes you must salvage what remains, while at other times you must burn the bridges and walk away. Absolutely. Um, this came up in a reading <laughs> for me just the other day and it was, um, it was a pick a pile reading. And, um, one of, one of the piles, it was talking about how people burn the bridges, um, a little too quickly. So just make sure that the bridge actually needs to be burned and you're not just burning bridges like crazy. Um, because not only does it stop that person or people, those people from crossing back over that bridge, it could be stopping you from crossing over the bridge too. Um, sometimes that's absolutely necessary and other times, other times, um, you're holding yourself back. I just thought that that's interesting that this, that burning bridges came up for me twice within a week. So definitely something that makes me take, just take a mental note, like hmm, burning bridges are coming up. Um, so yeah, that's cool. I like how her... Her little crown thing on her head it kind of looks like the world is it also kind of reminds me of kind of like it could be like horns but it could also be like like pillars like gemini like there's a lot of things that it kind of like reminds me of it kind of reminds me of like a sacred yoni um it's just interesting okay so I forgot that we were going to do a sample reading from the guidebook. So let's go back to the guidebook and find a spread. So there's an interview. The three card spread, the Beltane cross, the Maypole spread for shifting perspectives. Um, the flower crown spread for clarity in difficult times. Self-worship spread for understanding your gifts.
goddess spread for finding the right path and creation spread for starting something new. Mm. Let's do the maypole spread for shifting perspectives. We all have blessings and things to be grateful for. So allow the cards to show you how you can shift your perspective and start focusing on the good in your life. Card one, what is preventing you from seeing the blessings in your life? Card two, what do you have to be grateful for? Card three, what do you need to do to have a more positive perspective? Card four, what lesson are you learning right now that will benefit you in the future? All right, so let's check it out. So I've got my little guidebook here. I can see what's going on. So this is going to be a made up reading. This is just a sample reading. We're gonna make up a name. I'm looking around my room for a name. <laughs> just like, um, this is going to be a made up reading for a made up person named Rachel. If your name is actually Rachel, it's not specifically for you, but if it resonates, take it and run with it. That goes for all of you. But it's just easier for me to make these make uh, made up readings if I have a name. <laughs> so I can pretend like I'm speaking to a person. <laughs> so let's see. I'm going to be looking at what Rachel needs to do to shift her perspective. All right, so here we have, so here we have the numbers in the guidebook and there's no numbers here. So I'm just gonna say it's one, two, three, four. Okay, so card one of our Maypole spread, card two, card three, and card four. Okay, and we can just, oh look, there's a little spot for these. Just stick those right in there. Okay, cool. Okay, I guess we should put it this way because it's supposed to be like a pole. It's a little bit longer whatever. <laughs> Card one, what is preventing you from seeing the blessings in your life? Sacred waters. Drunken by the swell of the sea, I can see the blanket of her embrace. Unafraid of the presence releasing the cords. I call her in, I call her deeply within. Sacred waters. Um, I would say that that's probably like drowning in so much emotion. There's so much emotion going in, you're like sinking way deep down. And that's stopping Rachel from seeing the blessings in her life. Let's see if uh, we're correct. So that's like just my intuitive hit. Let's see if that ties in with what the card says um, it means. And then, oh, wait, I'm going to page, not card number. Okay, card 35. Okay. Sacred Waters says healing. So I do feel it's like like healing. I, I do see all the green that reminds me of healing. Um this card comes to a reading when you are ready to heal wounds that have troubled you for many moons, perhaps lingering pains from things lost or the weight of the past that creeps up to haunt you at night. Pulling sacred waters is a sign that you will soon be renewed and your soul will release the cords that have bound you to hurtful memories of old. You may not know what needs to be healed. You could be carrying baggage that isn't immediately present in your consciousness but the effects of such deep healing will become evident in the changes happening around you. Do not question the blessings coming into your life. They are here because you are slowly learning to wash away the blocks that have previously prevented such abundance. Sacred Waters reminds you to be gentle with yourself in the coming weeks. Difficult emotions or painful memories may surface 
but this is your spirit bringing them to your awareness so they can be healed for good. If you do experience painful memories, allow them to wash over you. Do not try to overcome what you feel or allow yourself to feel guilty for what you're feeling. Simply experience the wave, allowing it to pass at its leisure. So yeah, maybe there's like some resistance. Maybe there's like these things coming up and maybe Rachel's trying to shove it down or she's choosing to stay there for too long. Or maybe she's feeling guilt or, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I do feel like there's a lot of emotion involved. So the card meaning does tie in with what I'm getting intuitively. So depending on how you want to use these cards in your reading, intuitively or by the book, and then seeing how that ties into your uh, your reading. Either way, I think it looks like it will it will work. Card two, what does Rachel have to be grateful for? Here we have Oracle. Spirits of other worlds tell me tales of the unknown. Tell me tales of the forbidden. Perhaps Rachel has some um, some gift. Perhaps Rachel is an intuitive person. Perhaps Rachel has one or more of the Claire senses. Um, I feel like Rachel is able to tap in, to tap into her intuition. She is able to connect with others deeply and perhaps maybe that's why she gets wounded. Maybe she taps in a little too too much, maybe without protection or without setting like a proper boundary. And then Rachel gets hurt. But this is what Rachel has to be grateful for. So let's go to card 28 to see. Oh, look, I just came across this page right here. It says card companions. So it's saying that it's more powerful if it comes up with... Uh, with other cards made in. So some of them you may notice that, that they have a card companion or a card companions. Okay, so this one says the spirits is the key word. It says you have received invitations from the spirits, your ancestors and other benevolent, otherworldly beings. They have been waiting for you to seek their wisdom. Access to the spirits is always available to you, but you must communicate with them in their language. They speak to you in the silence of nature and symbols and the moods that are all around you. And you may hear their whispers in the darkness of your mind. This is not an illusion, but is illuminated guidance being offered to you. Do not be afraid of the messages you see unfolding in your life or of the beings who greet you as they are here for your highest good and will protect you against all other harmful beings. All you have to do is ask for their guidance and protection, and so you shall receive. Additionally, the spirits can step in to support you and wish to do so. No problem is too big or too small, and they ask that you seek their guidance regularly. So perhaps Rachel has the gift of communicating with her spiritual team. Perhaps you have beings who are no longer on this earthly plane uh, that are in communication with you. They bring you messages. So that's pretty cool. So that's saying to be grateful for the gift, whatever it is. And then what do you need to do to have a more positive perspective? Boundaries. I felt like that was coming up here with Oracle and the sacred waters and the very next card is boundaries. Um, let's go to card three. Self-respect. It says self-love can be expressed in many different ways. Sometimes it needs to manifest in a spa day with girlfriends getting up to exercise or sleeping in later than usual, while at other times it manifests in a need to set and enforce boundaries so that no one person completely drains you of your energy. No one is allowed or even needs to take all of you. No one has the right to demand all of your time, energy, or resources, or any parts of who you are. It isn't selfish to want to keep some things for yourself as doing so is a show of self-respect 
and an understanding that you cannot give what you don't have. Imagine trying to give more of your time when you don't have enough in the day to do what's already on your plate. Imagine spending more money when you're already in debt or giving more of your energy to make someone else happy when you've been depressed for a very long time. Oh my gosh, I literally feel like that is speaking directly to Rachel. You have pulled boundaries because you are giving too much of yourself away without recharging your batteries. You are encouraged to say no more often or at the very least, not right now. Yes, no is a complete sentence. And I did feel like this was gonna keep going and it is. I felt like there was just like more to this card. Know that this is for the good of everyone in your personal orbit, that you will have so much more to give once you are in a proper place of balance. Additionally, make sure to follow through with any boundaries you've set as other people will push your limits to see how much you are willing to bend to their desires. Stay committed to yourself and stand your ground. I love it. Card companions, pay special attention if boundaries appears in a reading along with goddess or self-worship. Receiving any combination of these cards is a significant warning and clear sign that you cannot continue as you have. Consider a retreat or spa weekend or any activity that will remove you from your regular life for a while. If a vacation or other such trip is not available to you, think about spending a few hours every week in a quiet place outside of your home, such as the bush, a park, or meadow, or other secluded area. Okay. So the bush, that makes me think um, nature. Like I'm not from Australia, but I think that's the bush like out in the wilderness. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> like maybe that would be like out in a forest or desert tea area. I'm not too sure. Drop it below. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> How is that word used? Um, card four. What lesson are you learning right now that will benefit you in the future? flower crown. So Rachel does not have a, any of the companion cards coming up. So I don't feel like it's such a dire warning. Um, I do feel like it is an important message. So Rachel is learning flower crown that will benefit benefits her in the future. Wear your power proudly and unapologetically for it is your birthright and it is eternal like the soul. Oh my gosh. I feel like Perhaps Rachel has been um, perhaps hiding some of her spiritual gifts and also um, in the same sense, overgiving. People are taking advantage of her. Um, perhaps they're not respecting Rachel's time. There's not an equal exchange of energy she's giving and the other people who she's giving to are not giving anything in return. But I feel like she's not fully embracing and putting herself out there like, look, this is who I am. Um, I'm not going to apologize for my gifts. I'm not going to hide them. Um, I feel like that's what this card is about. Trying to fit into other people's box of normal. This card says eternity. As with all circles, a flower crown represents eternity and the endless cycle of life, death, and rebirth. You may hear talk of this cycle quite often, and for good reason, as the rebirth cycle reminds you that nothing ever truly dies. What was is simply renewed and recycled into new life, perhaps taking on a different form, but with the sense of its power remaining the same. As with the gorgeous blooms of spring, you too can be restored. If you are going through a difficult time, know that you will receive a change in fortune soon. You are currently in a place of death so that something new and beautiful can emerge. Flower crown is a card of hope and will often appear when you are losing faith. Remember that no cycle, good or bad, can last forever. Even though it may feel that way at times, the presence of this card is a welcome sign that better days are just a short time ahead. In the same vein, if you have received an unusual period of good fortune, 
know that life moves in cycles and you may soon enter into a period of pause and even stagnation. Take advantage of this fortunate time. Most importantly, this card represents karma. What goes around comes around. Be sure to be kind with your good fortune and use it wisely as the universe will reward your kindness with even better blessings sometime down the road. So my initial um, intuitive hit on this card is not exactly what is coming up in the book. Here it's talking about wearing your power proudly and unapologetically for it is your birthright and it is eternal like the soul. I feel like um, the book is having more to do with the soul and cycles and karma and you know, um, I, I feel like this could also be tying in with um, perhaps Rachel's gift is dealing with the the people who are no longer on this earthly plane. I feel like that could be tying in with the reading or it could be because um, like we're here where it talks about like nothing ever truly dies. It was simply renewed and recycled into new life, um, taking on a different form, but with the essence of its power remaining the same. Uh, I do feel like that's, that could be tying in with this, this reading. I also feel like whatever you're going through, like Rachel's like, oh, drowning in these sacred waters, she's stuck. And um, that it's saying like, you know what, it's a cycle. You're not gonna be there for long. You're not gonna be there forever. You will come out of that. You will be renewed. I feel like it's telling Rachel not to give up on people, not to stop doing kind things, not to stop helping people, not to stop using your gifts for good um, to benefit others, but perhaps to set some boundaries, you know, like, yes, I will do this. And this is what I charge for that. Um, or this is what I need you to do for me. Or I can do this. <laughs> set clear expectations. And then when the person's like, oh, can you do this too? Oh, can you do that? Like, no, I'm sorry. Our, uh, you know, I, I agreed to do this and that's that's what I'm going to do. Something of that nature. So that is how the deck reads. Leave a comment below letting me know if you like it, what your thoughts were, and I will see you guys soon. Thank you for hanging out with me. Bye for now, gems.